mothers. They can either make you into a normal functioning member of society, or they can completely screw you up for life. And in some instances, mothers can be so twisted that they may just leave you dead. Having a new child in the family can turn lives upside down, especially at a young age. Parents become sleep deprived or even forgetful, like this mother out of Bloomington, Illinois, who forgot her child for an entire night. On December 21st, 2013, Elizabeth Potts left her child dressed in a snowsuit with a blanket covering her face in her husband's car overnight. During the night, the 11-week-old child nearly suffocated but didn't die until nearly a year later, on November 23, 2014, from brain damage resulting from the incident. Elizabeth and husband Timothy Crafton were held accountable for involuntary manslaughter, child endangerment, and two counts of obstruction of justice for initially lying to authorities. Elizabeth Potts was finally sentenced to three years in prison, while Timothy Crafton served two years for the negligent death of their child. While children may not like taking their medicine, in the long run it is ultimately to help them. In this case, however, children would be right to think twice about taking their pills. Following a lost custody battle on June 16, 2015, Nargis Shafirad hatched a plan to kill her five-year-old son Daniel Dana and make it look like an accident. First, she struggled with Daniel, cutting and bruising his head before force-feeding him an entire bottle of Benadryl, enough to kill two adults and enough to stop Daniel's heart. After, she drove her son's body to a road in Montgomery County, Maryland, where she set the car on fire with herself inside, feigning a car accident. Nargis was pulled out of her car alive, but suffered second and third degree burns on almost half of her body. Then, authorities uncovered the entire murder plot. Nargis pled guilty to first degree murder and arson for her son's death, and was sentenced to 50 years behind bars. It's the role of a parent to discipline their children. A stern talking to, a brief grounding, or even a spanking could be argued as appropriate in certain circumstances. But this mother personally administered the death penalty. Michelle Blair was a mother to four children, two of whom she claimed were sexually abusing their younger sibling. It is unknown if this is true or not, but Michelle's punishment was death. Nine-year-old Stephen Barry was beaten in the head, choked with belts, and forced to ingest Windex. After this, she had his genitals scalded with boiling water. Thirteen-year-old Stony Blair was beaten, burned, and eventually suffocated with a grocery bag. After killing her children, Michelle stacked their bodies on top of one another in a deep freezer where they went undiscovered for years. The two surviving siblings were burned with clothing irons and beaten with two-by-fours, leaving one with over 25 scars on his back. The court claimed that Michelle had no evidence her children were sexually assaulting their sibling. Truly remorseless, when asked about Stoney's death, she said it was intentional and that she'd do it again, though she claimed Stephen's death was unintentional despite his immense suffering. She was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Having a child means rearranging your belongings to ensure no hazard or harm comes to them. This mother failed in one of the worst ways possible. Tantania Manners, a self-proclaimed full-time mommy, was talking to friends outside her Yonkers New York apartment on May 25, 2015, when she heard a gunshot from inside. Tantania and her friends rushed into the apartment to find a grisly sight. Tantania's four-year-old daughter, Michaela, had shot herself in the face with a semi-automatic handgun. Amazingly, she was expected to survive, but unfortunately, didn't make it. Tantania was taken into custody years later on April 12, 2017 for child endangerment. Not only was the child around loaded firearms, but also the distribution of narcotics permitted by the mother. 
Tantania was brought back to Westchester County Jail and is due back in court soon. With technology advancing by the day, escaping reality on a whole new level is becoming easier, even for parents. In 2010, Kim Yo Chul and Choi Mi Sun became obsessed with an online game, playing 6 to 12 hours at a time at an internet cafe, all the while ignoring their three-month-old child. While they raise their in-game virtual child, their newborn starved to death after suffering from severe malnutrition. After psychological evaluations, the mother received no jail time, while the father received only two years. The 25-year-old mother has another baby on the way. Thirty-one-year-old Shabora Thomas was caught by a neighbor acting suspiciously while taking out large trash bags. After claiming she needed to move away as soon as possible, a terrifying truth was uncovered. The neighbor asked where Shabora's children were, noticing their absence in the wake of the mother's busy day. She plainly admitted to drowning them and hiding their bodies under a neighbor's home. Initially, Shabora's matter-of-fact tone was brushed off as a joke. But after repeating her story, police took her into custody. In a statement, Shabora confessed to filling a bathtub with water after picking the kids up from daycare, then drowning her daughter first before doing the same to her son. The children were only seven and five years old. Shabora had no history of mental illness and was charged with capital murder after police confirmed the locations of the bodies. As for the reason behind the murders, it is unknown what brought the mother to kill her children so heartlessly. The world needs foster mothers to care for the abandoned children, but under the so-called care of this mother, abandonment probably would have been a better circumstance. 41-year-old Jacob Sullivan raped his adopted daughter Grace for three years from ages 15 to 18, all the while Jacob's partner, Sarah Packer, was aware of the abuse. One day, Sarah watched Jacob perform the monstrous act on their daughter to satisfy a rape-murder fantasy. They then gave Grace a lethal dosage of Tylenol PM, but despite being bound, gagged, and left in the attic, Grace survived into the next day. However, when Jacob saw she was still breathing, he strangled her to death. The couple then stuffed her body with cat litter and left her in the attic for several months, telling everyone she had run away. Supposedly, Sarah was the foster mother of 30 other foster children and was collecting money from the government after Grace's death, totaling at least $4,000. The mountain of charges led Sarah to waive her hearing as of February 2017. The cases for both murderers are ongoing. Child abuse is always wrong, but in this case, a life was saved because they were abused in public. Three-year-old Zoe, daughter of Kathleen and Kenny Sanchez, was only 19 pounds and looked severely malnourished. A deputy for Lakewood Police noticed the father striking the child at a disabled American veteran's store. Kathleen and Kenny claimed that Zoe had an eating disorder, but they were allegedly starving her to death. Zoe and her two-year-old sister were eventually taken from the home and adopted by Amy Arellano who said Zoe would ask for food but had difficulty eating as she feared being hit or having her food taken from her. After fleeing police and changing their appearance, Kathleen and Kenny were caught by authorities. While Kathleen claimed she didn't abuse Zoe and was adamant she was the victim of losing her children to protective custody, the real victims were the children. Thankfully, they are safe now and have plenty to eat. On November 22, 2004, Dina Schlosser went far for her religion. Believing that God required the arms of a child, Schlosser amputated her 11-month-old daughter's arms with a knife while singing along to the gospel song, He Touched Me. After, she called 911 to explain what she did, but by the time police found her, the child was fatally injured and later died. She was found not guilty on the basis of insanity and was admitted to a hospital. 
After being released a second time, she was fired from Walmart after working there under her maiden name. As a mother, Mary Beth Tinning seemed plagued by infant death, losing nine of her children in 14 years. But this was no tragic accident. Doctors reported many of the deaths were a result of bad genes, but this theory fizzled out when one of the victims had no blood relation to Mary Beth. Addicted to the sympathy she received from her dead children, she smothered several of her own children to death, with none making it past infancy. On February 4, 1986, Mary Beth confessed to killing three of her children, and though she was only sentenced for the murder of one, it is unclear if more died at her hands. As the case became more complicated, she tried to say her confession was coerced. As of February 2017, she has been denied parole for the sixth time. She is still alive in prison today. Thank you for watching. I've recently released exclusive merch featuring a number of pieces from Seriously Strange. Now you can get the design that have been on many of the shirts that I have worn on shirts, hoodies, mugs, and more. Just check the link in the description below to visit my store and get your merch while it's still there. Your purchases help to keep my channel running. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to check out my Patreon, watch another video, and of course, subscribe to my channel, because you won't want to miss what's next. And I'll see you next time.